Hey everyone, and welcome to Comic Breakdown. If you're new to the page, be sure to give us a like and a sub if you like the content we have coming out. And today we're going to get into something a little bit different. I don't have anything currently coming from DC Comics pool for today or tomorrow, so we're going to be covering one of my favorites that's come out this year, and that is Green Lantern Legacy. Now this is a Green Lantern story that is not canon. So this is this is not taking place in the in the DC universe as it stands. But it is a really fun and really cool story about community and a new take on, on Green Lanterns. So without further ado, let's dive into this issue. So getting into this, it's now this is written by Min Lee and Andy Tong. And it dives us into Coast City. And we have Ty Pham and Kim Tran. Now, Kim Tran is Ty's grandmother. And they own a little Vietnamese shop in the Jade Market area. Or like the, the community of where most of the Vietnamese people have set up, you know, businesses and shops and things of that nature. And right off the bat, it shows us that his grandmother is actually a Green Lantern. And as these two have, you know, a little bit of a back and forth with each other, a brick comes flying through the window. And this seems to be a, a regular occurrence. You know, it's just people wanting to try to push them out of the neighborhood. And this is something that's almost a, a weekly reoccurrence, if not more. And they're used to what they have to do. You know, have, they have to board up the windows and wait for it to be able to get replaced. You know, this is a, this has just become a normal life to them. Almost to the point where Ty's parents want to sell the shop and move out of the neighborhood just because of how bad it's gotten in recent years. And of course, Kim Tran, you know, being a Green Lantern, says, you know, this is something that we're not going to do. We're not going to let fear drive us from our home. Not again. And when she speaks of not again, she, she refers to her trying or having to flee Vietnam due to everything happening, in, happening at the time. And we're cut to later that evening, and Ty wakes from his sleep, and he sees his grandmother's jade ring, or the Green Lantern ring, laying next to him in his bed. A little bit confused on why it's there, he goes and takes it back to his grandmother and sets it on her bedside and returns to his room. Seconds later, the ring is already back at his door, and as he opens his door, it beams him in the head. Really confused on what's happening, he, he takes the ring back to his grandmother's room, and this time she's awake. And he says, you know, I don't really know what's going on with your ring, but the weirdest thing happened. And she, she immediately cuts him off and says, you know, it's not my ring anymore, it's yours. The ring's chosen. And then she falls back asleep. Now waking up the next morning, they find that his grandmother had passed away in her sleep. And that weekend they have a funeral. People from all over come, you know, to pay tribute because of all the things that Kim Tron had done. She was a, a beacon of the community. She helped people when they when they really needed it, when they were new to the community and felt out of place. That she she was the one to come over and make it feel a little more like home. And this is where we get introduced to a individual by the name of Xanders Griffin. And he claims to have known the grandmother. He's also a huge entrepreneur and inventor who who has made billions of dollars. And he pays his respects to Ty and then hands him a card. Now he, he tries to maintain some kind of normalcy after his grandmother's passing and, and he returns to school and he really just connects with his friends. You know, these are these are people he cares about and that mean something to him. And they're supposed to be doing a project at school, so they decide to do their project on Mr. Griffith, the billionaire. Because the, the project needs to be on a social innovation report, and who better to have that done on than a billionaire innovator. Now, once all said and done, he's done with school, and he heads back to his house. He, he goes to crash out, and the battery lets him know that it that it needs recharging. And it takes him to where his grandmother had hidden the lantern in one of the storage closets. Attached with the lantern is a note. And he reads the note and he says the Green Lantern mantra. In darkest day, in blackest night, no evil shall escape my sight. Let those who worship evil's might beware of my power, Green Lantern's light. And it teleports him to Oa. And on Oa, he's met with John Stewart. And John Stewart goes to welcome him as the new Green Lantern, and then's thrown off because he's he's a kid. You know, the Green Lantern's never chosen a, a teenager before. And so we got to assume this is taking place sometime during John Stewart's reign as one of the Green Lanterns. Now it doesn't have any references to Hal Jordan, but it does talk about John Stewart. So it's in between those two. And this is also during the Sinestro Corps' reign or, or 
or the birth of, the growing of. So not really knowing where Hal Jordan is, we do know that Jon Stewart's here. So we can have a, a little bit of a time frame of when we can assume this is happening. And not only is the ring choosing a teenager for the first time, it's also choosing a relative of the, the previous ring's owner. And we learn out that, that Kim Tran was actually a, a mentor of sorts to Jon Stewart. And so we know that, that she came before Jon Stewart. Probably after Hal Jordan, but before Jon Stewart. And so Jon Stewart introduces Ty to the, the entire Green Lantern. He, he gives him a little bit of history of what's going on. Let's him know that, you know, your grandmother was one of, one of the best when it came to Earth's Green Lantern heroes. But that he also needs to check with the council because this has never really happened before. And so he needs to make sure that the, the Green Lantern Corps is going to uphold him even being a Green Lantern from the get-go. And this is where we're met with, like, the spirit of his grandmother. And she kind of, you know, gives him a lowdown of, of what's happening, how this is all happening, how she became a Green Lantern. You know, the ring had found her when she lived in Vietnam, and they had to flee because of everything happening, because of the wars and things of that nature. And she used the ring just, you know, enough to be able to help her and her family escape. And he's still, you know, really confused. Like, why did the ring choose me? And it's the same thing why the ring chooses everybody. You know, it's drawn to the strength of willpower. And his willpower seems to be immensely strong, and so the ring chose him. And as we know, the rings never make mistakes. And then he's teleported back to Earth. And as he arrives, we're met with Mr. Griffin, our billionaire again. And he's here at the shop, popping in to, to say he wants to try to help the community. He's helping these guys fix their window. You know, he seems to be doing a lot of really nice things for them and not really understanding why. Now, later that night, Jon Stewart shows up and lets him know that it's time for training. And he takes him into space and to the dark side of the moon. And while this isn't typical training, they, they still don't know what's what. So at, until they know exactly what to do with a, a teenage lantern, they're going to give him a little bit of training. And that's where how uh, where Jon Stewart brings in Green Lantern Iolande. And usually it's Kilowog's job to train lanterns, but, you know, Jon Stewart says he's busy or whatever. You know, they, they make it to where it's understandable that, that he's being trained here on the dark side of the moon. And she gives him the lowdown, you know, the, the, the lantern is willpower. Whatever you can think of, you can construct with the lantern ring. And so they go through their training a little bit, and she also gives them a little bit of backstory of things that he's going to have to be looking out for that are going to be attacking, you know, threats that Jon Stewart's going to need help with. Threats that, you know, his, his predecessor, his grandmother, had helped defend off. And that's the Sinestro Corps. And they talk about Sinestro and his fall from the Green Lanterns, and how Kim and Jon Stewart ha have pretty much held off Sinestro's attempt to attack Earth. But with his grandmother being gone, Sinestro might take this as an opportunity to be able to take on Earth. And that he's going to need to be ready for this. But in the meantime, he needs to try to meditate. Because his grandmother developed a lot of her willpower through meditation. And, and possibly he could be able to do, to do the same thing. And so the night's done. And she takes him back to his bedroom on Earth. And, and before she takes off, she shows him how to use the suit. How to, how to essentially conjure the suit. Now picking up the next day, we see him with his friends playing ping pong and really just being a kid. You know, we see him get bullied by some other kids and he really wants to use his ring to be able to to come back at these guys but instead he just he conjures a rock so one of them trips over it and then this this is when they head over to mr griffin's building to do their little project that they have to do and they have a conversation with him about how he feels about innovation and what innovation means to him and essentially what he's talking about is rebuilding the entire city to make it something new to make it something better he wants to build the future of tomorrow. And then we see a little bit later on, Ty really trying to meditate to be able to harness willpower. And it's just not working for him. You know, it may have been something that worked for his grandmother, but it's not something that he particularly is picking up very, very easily. And so he tries to do what he's best at, and he draws. And he draws so much to the point where he puts himself into his own drawings. And he's met with a Sinestro core version of himself. And then he's woken from this meditation trance 
that he's put himself into. And so essentially it's it's real in in the context that he's created this using the Green Lantern ring. So essentially he's created a mental battleground for him to explore. And then his friends come over, you know, they they do they do regular kid things. We see them just being teenage kids hanging out, having a good time, and then he lets it slip about the Green Lantern ring. And he tells his friends everything that's happened up to this point. And you know, he, he shows them this suit. They, they're they really excited for him. And then he takes them flying. And as they're flying around, having a, you know, a great old time, he sees the kids that threw the brick through his window prior. And he goes chasing them down, stops them from, from vandalizing his family shop, and then drops a ton of bricks on top of them, causing them to crash and the police arrest them. Now, before he's able to, like, intervene and do anything on his own, we see Mr. Griffin come through and grab him and pull him into an alleyway. It lets him know, like, I know who you are through my face recognition program that's not going to be available for, like, another decade. And he talks about how, like, his grandmother was almost a mentor to him and that she confided within him and, and she knew that he could, they could share secrets with one another. So he knew who the Green Lantern was and he knows now who the Green Lantern is. And he actually wanted to be a Green Lantern himself for quite a while, but he ended up finding another way and he created Tresson. So that was his way of essentially giving back to the community. But we're really getting some, some bad vibes from this guy because he just seems to be always around, always, you know, wanting to find out and talk to Ty. And now that we know he already knew he was a Green Lantern, you know, it, it brings into question his motives on, on what he's doing here. Now we pick up later that week and we're back in, in Ty's mindscape and he's battling the Sinestro version or Yellow Lantern Ring version of himself. And the Yellow Rant Lantern Ring version of himself cr creates multiple of himself. And this is when his grandmother appears. And really his grandmother is mentoring him through this, even though it's all himself. He's created all of this. And so he understands, you know, th this is all a manifestation of his own mind and that he has the power to stop it all instantly. And so he uses the ring and encapsulates every single one of these yellow lantern versions of himself. And his friends show up again and they talk about his suit and how, you know, he didn't really like the style of it. It was a little too tight. And so they, they play around with a bunch of different ideas and we see him go through a few. And then he tells them that, that you know, Mr. Griffin knows that he's a Green Lantern and they all tell him that he needs to be careful and he assumes that they're just jealous but they don't really understand like they don't know why he's he, a billionaire has been hanging around him so much you know it's just weird that he's so involved in what's going on and he storms out of the room and heads outside and this is where mr griffin's standing outside like weirdly waiting for him his friends go chasing after him and they all see and have a confrontation here and his friend really decrypts that tresson means Sinestro, or at least it's another way uh, of jambling up the words and spelling Sinestro. And this is where he comes clean. And, and it's like, you know, well, you got me. Technically, I am a yellow lantern. And we see him pull out his ring and transform into his suit. And he's pretty much just saying, like, you need to hear me out. Like, Sinestro saw my potential and gave me access to true power. Like, I can revamp this entire community. I can revamp the world. We just can't use the, the Green Lantern approach that's just too reactive for visionaries. And if you want to eliminate evil, you have to strike first. And this is where our Yellow Lantern holder brings the kids that had vandalized his shop. And apparently they were just released with a smack on the hand. And Ty conjures a, a katana sword and sets them free and lets them know that, you know, he wants justice, but not like this. And Griffin offers him a Yellow, ran yellow Lantern ring and he rejects it. He's like, you know, th this isn't the route I want to go. This isn't the route my grandmother took and this is not the route I'm going to take. And this is when we see them start to duke it out. And, you know, Ty's still really unfamiliar with how to use his lantern powers and what to conjure. But he's conjuring things that, that work for him. Like things he's used, like ping pong paddles and things of that nature to be able to defend himself. And he seems to be getting his butt kicked though. And then he conjures pretty much everyone he's known. 
You know, he, he's realized all the time that he's worried about upholding and protecting a legacy, but he, he also understands that the legacy is there to protect him. And with his ring, he, he conjures everybody he's seen as a Green Lantern, and they all start taking on Griffin, and, and they're just laying waste to him. And the Yellow Lantern ring lets him know, like, the, the power level's at 5%, like, you need to recharge. And so, Ty essentially won this fight, and the Yellow Lantern takes off. Now, as the children, you know, they're, they're, they're happy, everything went well for them, they start to head inside, and this is where they're met with Jon Stewart. And Jon Stewart sits down with them and lets them, you know, have some tea, and they discuss, you know, the future of him as a Green Lantern, and he lets them know that the, the Guardian Council has confirmed it, and he's officially a, a member of the Green Lantern Corps. And Jon Stewart even lets him know further, like, I watched your fight with Griffin, and from what I can see, your grandmother would be proud, and the ring is in good hands. And that he didn't even need to intervene. Like, he was he was holding his own. He was doing a good job. If he needed to intervene, he would have. But for the most part, Ty was able to hold his own. And Jon Stewart lets him know, like, you did well, but you're going to need a lot more training because right now you only have the basics down. And Ty lets him know, like, before we go on do this, I have an idea for our first mission. And this is where he follows in the footsteps of a gra his grandmother and brings food and welcomings to the new immigrants in the area as, as a way of war welcoming them and making it, make it feel warm and, and home-like for the newcomers in the area. And that is where this will end. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. I, I really did enjoy this. You know, this is a not canon run of the Green Lantern. So, you know, it doesn't have to be taken too literal. You don't have to dive into it too much. It's just a really fun story about community and introducing us to a more diverse Green Lantern that we've never really seen before. And his uniform alone is really outstanding. I love the, the artwork on it and the way it was drawn. And it's de it definitely pays homage to his... his ancestral roots and things of that nature so all in all you know the the artwork the storyline was is a great story you know it, it doesn't have to be read into too deep because it is non-canon so let me know what you guys think in the comments did you like it did you enjoy it would you like to see him cross over into the dc, DC universe later on you know um so yeah let me know what you guys think and if you haven't yet be sure to like and subscribe to the page and until the next video